Formula One is controlled by two sets of regulations, the technical regulations and the sporting regulations. Now, year on year, these regulations are changed, partly in the pursuit of improved safety and partly in response to, to try to develop the spectacle, the show. When the technical regulations change, then we have to design a slightly different car. And when the sporting regulations change, we have to think about how we're going to deploy the car, which could be different qualifying strategy. The timing associated with when the regulation changes are announced are, are usually with a view to, to try and limit the ability of teams to make a head start against their competitors. Going forward in 2021, we have a a third dimension now to, to deal with, which is obviously the financial regulations. One particular way that they've tackled this in the in the data area is by constraining the amount of compute resource we can use for the aerodynamic performance of the car. And what's quite interesting is that even though we're all constrained now, it's still the case that the better teams can deploy that resource better than the not-so-good teams. The teams that have been most successful in recent years in, in Formula 1 are those, are those teams that, that have that organisation of agility and the ability to, to look beyond just Formula 1 for technology, innovation, taking improvements in, in, in a wide variety of other organisations and other industries and making it work in the world of Formula 1. Data science has asked us to have conversations with businesses that don't appear to have anything to do with Formula 1. That, then when you can apply them in Formula One context are, are big innovations. It's a very exciting time often when you are in this big regulation change and the regulations for 2021, 2022 are one of those cases where we're moving into new aerodynamic constraints, new race formula, new tyres, everything's changing and we're having to work very much on our pure virtual simulation models and then we're very dependent on our on our digital tools so that we can then project into previously unexplored territory you don't take the first solution you find you keep looking through until you've made sure that you've found every source of departure between your measured data and your model data and you've corrected it when you genuinely completely understood the problem then you can find a solution